So there's a pretty wild story coming out of the Navy right now concerning the USS Manchester, an independence class LCS ship, just like this one right here, where the chief of the boat, a senior chief Marrero, who uh, is a trained information specialist, that's an IT specialist in the Navy, is in a position now as chief of the boat. So she represents the crew in terms of the morale and what needs to be done to keep the crew going to the captain. She reports directly to the captain every day, uh, shoulder to shoulder with the XO. The XO is responsible for the wardroom and what they need to the captain. Well, what happened was, <laughs> is the chief's quarters decided to use the chief's association debit card and every command has their own fund uh, to buy a Starlink. A Starlink is an antenna that communicates with a ring of satellites around the uh, globe uh, for internet access, public internet access. And so they bought a Starlink with their debit card that the chief's fund paid for out of their own pocket and paid the monthly subscription fee for uh, out of their own fund. Uh, but then what they did with it is they installed it on board the ship as, a, as an unauthorized install of an antenna that can transmit on board a U.S. Navy warship. Yeah. Yeah, they did that. So the funny thing about this is a crazy story. What the hell um, is somewhere on board the top side of this vessel is an additional antenna uh, for Internet access that is cabled directly to the goat locker, which is what we call the chief's quarters. And uh, down there in the goat locker is a Wi-Fi router. And the Wi-Fi router was serving the chief's quarters where they were checking uh, sports scores, social media posts, you know, across all the social media sites, and watching movies from streaming services in, in, in the goat locker. Well, they went underway with this, and it worked fine, but they realized when they were outside the goat locker and in their workspaces, they didn't have access to the Wi-Fi. It wouldn't go that far. So when they pulled into Pearl Harbor, they bought Wi-Fi repeaters, again, with the Chiefs Association debit card. Paid for it out of pocket, at no cost to the Navy whatsoever. They installed additional transmitters on board this warship for their own Wi-Fi private use. Uh, now, a Wi-Fi repeater uh, doesn't need to be wired directly to the router, but it does need to have power. So at some point, it's plugged in somewhere. There is a cable involved with each one of these repeaters around the ship uh, broadcasting this unauthorized Wi-Fi network that was set up uh, by, by the chief's quarters. Now, Senior Chief Marrero, being an IT specialist, is very smart. She understands how networks work, and she hid this network uh, properly. It, she disabled something called SSID broadcasting, which means that you would not see the Wi-Fi appear as an available Wi-Fi network on your iPhone or Android, whatever mobile device you have, laptop, you know, any of those. You won't see it. But if you know the name of the network, you can manually search for it, and it will pop up, and it probably asks for a password, but you'll at least be able to see it on your mobile device. Well, she called the uh, network stinky. It was a stinky uh, Wi-Fi device uh, that was secret from the captain, the crew. This was just for the chief's quarters for a period of time. We're not sure how long. I didn't get those, those details, but it worked for a while. But eventually, uh, as things happen, there are no secrets on board a ship amongst the crew. The crew eventually found out that there was an additional Wi-Fi signal somehow on board this ship, and it was called stinky. Now, they wanted the crew who didn't have access to this wanted access to it and they couldn't. So they want, so they wanted to inform the captain. Now the captain has a couple different ways that you can inform him directly without using the chain of command. And it's completely legal. One is called a suggestion box. This used to be an actual metal box on board submarines. You'd put a little note in anonymously just to send a message to the captain of, Hey, we need this. This is going on. Uh, but usually it's for identifying problems and needs, nothing like reporting an additional Wi-Fi network that's broadcasting on board your ship. Nowadays, 2024, this suggestion box is digital and on the ship's LAN, which is a completely different, completely authorized network. Uh, any member can log in and send a suggestion to the suggestion box. But who can also read the suggestion box besides the captain and the XO is the chief of the boat. So when Senior Chief Marrero saw that there was a suggestion asking what stinky Wi-Fi was while they were underway in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, she conveniently deleted that message so that the captain did not know about stinky Wi-Fi. Now, 
The, another way that the crew can inform the captain of something without using the chain of command completely legally is something called captain's call. Captain's call is required to be done annually, and they break it down by rank. It's usually E4 and below, get, gets a meeting with a captain, usually on cruise mess, all at once for about an hour. And then you have the E5s, the E6s, and then the chief's quarters. They all get their own meeting. At some point, probably in one of those meetings, the stinky Wi-Fi was brought up to the captain. That's probably how he found out about it. The other way he found out about it was the captain and the crew know their ship. And this is not a very big ship. It's a complex ship, but it's not very big. At some point, someone's going to notice that there's an additional antenna topside. And that was probably the way this began. In the end, the captain finds out that he has a Wi-Fi signal on board his ship that even he can't access. So what does he do? He brings in the chief of the boat. Chief of the boat, we got a problem. We got to solve this. And this is where Senior Chief Marrero makes the first real mistake. Deleting the suggestion was a huge mistake too. Um, but when confronted by the captain as to what this stinky Wi-Fi device was, she first denies its existence. It's not there, she lies. And that breaks the trust right there. Once you lie, no matter if it's to the captain or another sailor, you know, you've really damaged your reputation at that point. Whenever the captain shows her perhaps on his phone or his, you know, laptop, iPad, whatever, that there is another Wi-Fi there when you mainly type in the name Stinky. She then says, oh, that, that's a wireless printer. Now, I don't know about the surface force and I haven't served in many decades, but in the submarine force, for security reasons, there's no such thing as a wireless anything. Every printer, especially printers, are hardwired for security reasons. There's no wireless printing. So, Assuming that that's still the Navy policy, a wireless printer would not make any sense. The captain understands that he's being lied to. I don't have the details of that conversation, but what he does after the conversation with the chief of the boat, who's lying to him, is he opens up an investigation, including people like NCIS to come and find out what the hell's going on. Also, ships go through inspections. Uh, like in -serve, for example, there's many more, but an in-service inspection is a very, very thorough inspection of all the systems and materials, including cabling all the way down to the component level of, or card level of, of, of every system. So through investigation and inspection, they discover the additional antenna, the cabling connecting it all, going right to the chief's quarters. And then of course the Wi-Fi repeaters around the ship that somehow went undetected for a period of time. It's all connected, it all blew up on, on the, uh, well, it ended up blowing up on the chief of the boat, but the chief's quarters in general. She was quietly relieved last year when this happened. This has been going through the court martial system for a year and we finally have, the result of that, the result of the court martial of Senior Chief Marrero, chief of the boat of the USS Manchester last year, she got demoted. Demoting a chief petty officer, senior chief, or whatever, even master chief, is almost unheard of. It's very rare. You really got to mess up to be demoted as a chief petty officer. So she went from senior chief to chief petty officer, of course, lost her chief of the boat um, ability qualification, if you will. She won't be a chief of the boat ever again on any future commands. Um, but the big thing is the loss of confidence, the lying, the loss of trust uh, is really hurting her professionally. It was just, I, you know, I found that in, in uh, my time in the Navy, and boy, do, we, we, we pulled some shenanigans, by the way, but once you're caught, you don't lie about it. You know, you, 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 own, you own up to it. I took the XO's door. It's in the torpedo room. I'll bring it back. Did that shit all the time, okay? I didn't lie about it. But the moment you lie about it and you break that trust, um, you know, it's, it's, it's over for you. And that's really why I went to court martial and why she was demoted. It wasn't just that she compromised the security of the vessel by installing a transmitting antenna on a warship. Jesus Christ. Uh, it's also that she lied to the captain about it and tried to cover it up when it was clearly she had been caught. And so the way the news is reporting this is pretty wild. Now, if we take a look right here at the Fortune News story, you can see that they're saying in their headline, Navy officer lost job for secretly installing internet on warship for checking social media, which is uh, a factual in what happened, but doesn't really say as to what the motivation or the, the purpose of that was. The Fox News headline saying that Navy leader demoted after she conspired with chiefs to run a legal Wi-Fi network on board the 
worship. So conspiring to run an illegal something. And that's a great example of the difference between center news uh, headlines and right-leaning news headlines. And there's a great tool on ground news uh, called bias comparison. This is comparing the headlines from left, center, and right sources. And for example, it says the left emphasizes the reasons behind uh, Murano's actions, framing them in a consideration for morale boosting, while the right headlines uh, the elaborate concealment and security risks, focusing on operational security. The right is all about accountability and not doing illegal actions because of it's a security concern versus the left is, yeah, she did something wrong, but she did it for the right reasons. On the right-hand side, you can see the total number of news stories here at the top in the coverage details. And right below that is the bias distribution. So you can see what news outlets are classified as left, right, and center. This is a very important tool right here. And if you scroll down, if you want to get more information, you can see the factuality rating and the ownership rating of those news sites. One of the cool things that Ground News does is offer this blind spot um, service here. And what this does is it looks at news stories across the platform, across the globe, and points out the ones that are only being reported by left-leaning media or right-leaning media. So if you're a person that, you know, tends to only read one side of the news, whether that's intentional or not, you may be completely unaware of some news stories because they only get reported by either the far left or the far right. And Ground News has a great mobile app too. You can keep up with international news that's not being uh, covered on your local news media stations and stay informed. It's great, it's easy to use, you can take it with you on your phone, check it anytime. You can save 40% off the Vantage plan. That's the plan that I use by scanning the QR code or just click the link in the description or just go to ground.news forward slash subbrief. Let's take a look at the United States Institute's uh, fleet deployment map here. They, they publish this weekly. It's a great infographic. I'm so grateful to the Naval Institute for doing that. I'm a member of the Naval Institute. I suggest uh, if you're interested in the Navy at all, you don't need to be retired or former Navy to be a member. Uh, definitely check them out. Uh, the USS George Washington above my head here is off the coast of San Diego doing a workup or some testing, uh, just getting some sea time really. Uh, I'm really jealous of the WASP ARG, that whole amphibious ready group, is in port in uh, Turkey, or they were anyway, and uh, they got to be having a great time. I've always wanted to go to Turkey. The history of Turkey is so cool, and the archaeological sites that they have there are just amazing. Uh, we do have two carriers off the coast of the Saudi Arabian Peninsula uh, due to the tensions in that area. We continue to intercept, you know, weapons coming out of Yemen, uh, trying to attack shipping. That's a whole mess right there. Of course, Iran is threatening Israel. Um, there's been a number of attacks out of uh, Lebanon and, and Yemen as well into, into Israel. And so we have the Theodore Roosevelt, who normally would be in the West Pacific is also in theater, uh, kind of keeping an eye on things, ready to respond if things continue to escalate in, in that region. But the real news, the, the thing that happened most recently here is just north of Taiwan. We're going to zoom in on that area here. And I want to show you what China is up to uh, here recently. This is going back about a week now, maybe two weeks. Uh, at the Senkaku Islands. This is the island chain. It's part of the Japanese island chain. Uh, going south from Japan, we have Okinawa over there, Senkaku over my head, uh, Taiwan's over on this side here. And now the Senkaku Islands are contested because they are formally part of Japan's island chain, but of course China claims them as well because anything in Western Pacific, China likes to claim like they do in the South China Sea. Now. We've had a number of incidents in around these islands just this year. For instance, if we go back a couple months, there is a uh, research vessel out of Japan full of Chi or Japanese students, graduate students doing uh, environmental surveys of these islands. And a lot of these islands, you're not allowed to set foot on. They're, they're unmanned islands and they're protected. And so from this ship, these students are doing their survey, but because China feels like they own those islands, they send their Coast Guard ships out there to try to keep the, 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 the Japanese student ships, research vessels away. This led to a confrontation a few months ago between the Japanese Coast Guard and the Chinese Coast Guard. But because there is, um, 
less tension with the Japanese Coast Guard than it is, say, with the Philippine Coast Guard. Things didn't get out of hand. There wasn't any ramming or anything like this. But what they did recently, China has then sent its own research vessel to the Senkaku Islands and violated Japanese territorial waters because they don't recognize them as Japanese territorial waters. Now, what's uh, different about this ship than, say, the university ship that Japan sent is this research ship from China is dual purpose. It can do detailed uh, ground surveys of the bottom and the continental shelf and all that around the islands, but it can also locate those internet cables, uh, the, the communication cables that connect all the islands together, uh, all the way from Japan to Taiwan. Some even go into China too, and they can get those exact locations. Once those locations are found, they can be used by the military for targeting if they wanted to cut communication. And that's just one example of many things that the research vessel can discover for research purposes, but also be used by, by the military. That's called dual use or dual purpose. But the big thing here is that the Chinese research vessel violated the territorial waters of Japan again to test Japan's resolve. And Japan did respond diplomatically saying, hey, they're doing it again. You need to stop doing this. And they sent their Japanese Coast Guard out there to shoo the uh, ship away. Also, at the same time that that's going on with the research vessel, uh, China and a, uh, a Russian warship, but here photoed is uh, two of the Chinese vessels, transited in the international waterway, which is fine, between uh, Okinawa and the Sakaku Islands. But during that transit, they went out of their way. The Chinese vessels went out of their way to leave the international corridor and violate territorial waters again, this time with their warships instead of their uh, sur survey ships. So China is just continually going out of its way to provoke a reaction from its neighbors. It's been doing this in the South China Sea for years. We've monitored and documented all that tension that's escalating there now. And they've been doing it with Japan as well. This is the most recent uh, violation of territorial waters. And the fact that they were completely legal in transiting the corridor and went out of their way to violate that is clear that China is not making mistakes. They're in intentionally provoking Japan just to see their reaction or try to normalize the behavior of territorial violation at sea. So, cause that's what they did with the Philippines for years. And this is what it's led to now after some 20, 30 years of this gray zone warfare in the South China Sea near the near the Philippine Islands and in around shoals that the Philippines legally claim, they treat the Philippine Coast Guard like this. Japan's not there yet. China doesn't do that to Japan yet, but they're on the same path that leads to that kind of behavior. And it begins like this, violating territorial waters routinely, claiming islands that are not theirs as Chinese, and then defending those waters with water cannons. This is where, where this is leading to. We've already seen it happen with the Philippines. Now it's in progress with Japan. It takes years to get to this point, but we're well on their way. Japan is not dumb. They see this happening too. So in response to this, uh, Japan recently, within the last month, has announced that they're going to work closer with the Australian military, doing more war games with each other's militaries, including information sharing uh, amongst their uh, in intelligence collection collecting communities. So now the United States has more allies that are working together, making stronger bonds between their militaries and their intelligence. Uh, we we have you know a, a strong relationship with the Philippines, of course, and then Australia and Japan. We've had good relationships for many decades, and we're all working together to try to prevent escalations beyond this point and to not even let it get to this point with other nations. If anything, we're trying to de-escalate it in this, in this region, but China is hell-bent and determined to just continually escalate tensions in the region because they're the country that wants change. Every country from Japan to South Korea, Taiwan, Vietnam, especially Philippines, as you go down the coastline, everybody wants things to calm down and stay the same. The status quo is the official policy of the United States towards Taiwan and the relationship of everything that's going on right now. China is trying to upset that balance. And when you have one side of a two party system in conflict and one side just wants to escalate, there's little you can do other than escalate with them to force them to stop. So 
I'm watching this. We're going to see where this goes for the rest of the year and well into 2025. And uh, hopefully things make a change. But for years now, we've been documenting on this channel the escalation in the South China Sea. And it's now happening uh, to Japan. And uh, we're on a course that is going to lead eventually to some form of military conflict. And uh, we hope it doesn't get to that point. But that's where we're going. All right. Check out Ground News by scanning the QR code you have right here or click the link in the description or just go to ground.news forward slash subbrief to save 40% off your Vantage plan. That's the plan that I use. Uh, you should give it a shot. It's really good. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.